In this video, I want to share with you my Audacity wish list for 2024. So let's get going. Hello, friends. Mike Adams here with Learn Audacity. I've divided my Audacity wish list for 2024 into two main categories. The first one has to do with tracks. There are these are things that I am hoping for, changes that I'm hoping can be made to enable us to better manage our tracks when we're recording and editing. And the second category that I have is for plugins or effects. And so let's get going on this right away. I have a screen open here where I've got the meter toolbar up above monitoring my audio, which I always do before I press record, because I want to make sure, number one, that Audacity hears my audio and that it's at a good level before I press record. I like this to bounce around between a negative 12 and a negative 6 in terms of peak, peak volume. The problem with having a single meter at the top here is that when I start to add multiple tracks, I can quickly lose visibility of the audio level in those individual tracks. Obviously, when you play back, it's playing back through that bottom meter toolbar. And on playback, I'm getting a composite level of all of my unmuted tracks in that bottom meter toolbar. Well, what I would like to see, and the first thing on my wish list, is to have these meter toolbars brought down into the tracks individually and then set up vertically so that I'm getting a vertical look at it instead of a horizontal look and that each track has its own set of meters. Now, I can go into Audacity here. Let me show you this real quick. I can go to a vertical view here. If I go into options, it brings up this window. It defaults to horizontal, but I can go to a vertical view, but look what it does. It, you know, it's kind of useless. I've got this vertical view here now on my left channel because I'm just recording in mono and it's not really giving me any information. I don't know what the DB level is doing. It's, it's just kind of pointless to me, but if we bring that meter down into the track, we'll have more visibility here where we can expand it out and look at the actual DB level or the RMS level. You have both capabilities here in Audacity and get a better view per track of what's going on just with that track. I would really like to see that. I think that would be a real benefit, a real plus in working with Audacity if we had those meter toolbars down in the tracks themselves. Now, with that being said, here, let me go back real quick to a horizontal look here before I go too much further. I'll take this back to horizontal so that, again, I can see my actual dB level. And one advantage to this is, is that I can see the individual track levels without just looking at a composite view of every unmuted track. And that's huge. That's a big deal. My second request that really has to do with the same thing, which is why I put it number two, is to give us the ability to be able to arm individual tracks to record. That means that there would be an arm button over here somewhere in the track header, and I wouldn't see any activity on my meter here until I arm my track to record. And I can arm individual tracks to record or to not record. And at the same time, I can monitor the audio that's in that individual track, not just this composite view that I get now. So those are my first two requests. Number one, move the audio meters down into the track header and then give us the ability to arm each track individually to record. And the third item on my Audacity wish list concerning tracks is simply to give us the ability to be able to select different inputs on a per track basis. In other words, if I'm using an audio interface that has four inputs, I would like to be able to grab each one of those four inputs and assign them to an individual track, giving us multi-track recording capability. My normal audio interface is a Zoom H6, and when I'm setting it up in Audacity, I have to set it up as a stereo mix because Audacity doesn't recognize the individual microphone inputs on my interface. 
My other DAWs do. Yes, I do use other DAWs, but Audacity doesn't have that ability yet. Let me show you what I mean. Let's come up here to the Audio Setup button, and let's go to Audio Settings, and let's see what we have here. Right now, I have the ability to record via the options that are listed here, and that's all I can pick, but that's project wide. That isn't track, that isn't individual tracks. That's project wide. So if I select my MacBook Pro microphone, my MacBook Pro microphone is what's assigned to every channel or every track, rather, in my project. Well, I would like to correct that. I would like for Audacity to work toward getting us individual track assignments per audio interface. In other words, I would like to be able to assign track number one or microphone number one in my audio interface to any track, be it track one or track two or track three, and in so doing, be able to do multi-track recording. Right now, that's a restriction, but I would like to see that changed because I think that would be a big deal moving forward. And then the last wish list for tracks for me in Audacity is to give us a master track. Right now, again, we've got these meter toolbars up here, which are kind of a composite, especially in the playback mode. But how about we turn that into a master track instead? I would like to be able to put effects on a master track, effects like final compression, effects like a limiter. But right now, I don't have that ability. Right now, all I can do is assign those on an individual track basis. But I think it would be a huge step forward to be able to have that master track and to be able to put effects or plugins on that master track as well. Okay, let's turn our attention to effects or plugins. Number one, I would like Audacity to give us the ability to save an FX chain. When we assign plugins over here in the left side of our track, real-time plugins, it would be nice to be able to save those as an FX chain for the project that we're working on so that I don't have to manually add them over and over and over again I can add the effects that I want. Let's say I have six effects in this track and it's for a podcast. I would like the ability to be able to save that chain off as some particular name that I want to give it, be it podcast or whatever, and then be able to recall that, be able to assign that FX chain back into tracks and in future projects just to save myself some time. Again, I use other DAWs and other DAWs have the ability of doing that. So let's bring Audacity up to speed so that it can compete with these other DAWs. And additionally, I, I suppose this could be either a, a track wish list or a, an effects wish list, but I would like to have the ability to save a track as a template. That means that once I put my FX chain in a track and I've saved the FX chain, that I have the ability to save that track as a template with those effects already assigned. So that in future projects, I can just open up that track template, load it into my project, and be ready to go because my effects chain is already there and the track is already there and I'm ready to start recording and producing some content. That would be really good to have as well. And not only to be able to save a track template, but to be able to save a project as a template. In other words, if I have a project that I'm working on, let's say I have a podcast with three people in it and a music track, for a total of four tracks, well, each individual in the project is going to probably be EQ'd separately because their voices are different. They might be in a different room. They might be in a different part of the city. They might be across country. So to be able to have the ability to build an effects chain per track and then be able to save the track template and then also to be able to save the project as a template with all of my tracks preloaded with all of the effects preloaded. This is a big deal. This is a big time saver when it comes to audio production using Audacity, and it's something that I would like to see done. Now, let me draw your attention back to the screen for this next set of things on my wish list. You'll see that when I come to add an effect here, and these are real-time effects, which Audacity supports a lot of them now. If I come up to add an effect, one of the options that I have here is Audacity. And Audacity has moved certain of its old Nyquist effects, or its, its old plugins, rather, into the ability to use them in real time. 
Here you see we've got bass and treble, distortion, phaser, reverb, and wah-wah. These are things that I, as a spoken word content producer, don't use. I don't want reverb in my audio. In fact, I work hard to make sure that it's not there. I'm not going to use a wah-wah pedal uh, when I'm doing an audio book or when I'm recording a podcast. I don't want that stuff there. But my point is, Audacity has begun moving some of the built-in effects in Audacity into this real-time category. And so I'm asking for some more that specifically relate to voice over or to spoken word content editors. And the first one is loudness normalization. I would love to see the loudness normalization plugin in Audacity brought into this real-time world right here. The loudness normalization plugin is huge. It's an incredibly powerful plugin, but it's destructive. I would like to see it moved into this non-destructive arena of real-time plugins so that we can use it more confidently knowing that we're not destroying the audio that we're working on. In loudness normalization, I can set the luffs level of my track and I can set the RMS level of my track if I'm doing ACX audiobooks. Like I said a moment ago, it's an extremely powerful plugin. Give it to us in real time. Let's move it over and let's make it a real time plugin. The next one that I would like to see moved into a real time category is noise reduction. The noise reduction plugin in Audacity is extremely powerful. I use it all the time. I teach students how to use it all the time. It's one of the most powerful noise reduction tools that I've ever come across. And I would like to see it turned into a real-time tool so that we can take advantage of it in a non-destructive manner. And the third one on my list is ACX Check. Now, I know this isn't an effect. I know that's technically it's not an effects plugin, but it is a plugin that you can get for Audacity. Two things that I would like to see happen here. Number one, I would like to see ACX Check become a native plugin with Audacity. In other words, when you download and install Audacity, ACX Check is a part of the installation. ACX Check is an amazing, amazing plugin. If you're doing audiobooks, it's going to tell you whether or not your RMS level meets the standard, whether your peak level meets the standard, whether your room tone meets the standard, and whether your sample rate is at 44.1. Running ACX Check as a final step in your audiobook production ensures that you're going to meet the ACX specifications for audiobooks. So let's make it part of Audacity. Another one that I would like to see brought over is the Filter Curve EQ. The Filter Curve EQ is extremely popular with most Audacity users, but it's destructive. Let's move it over into the real-time category and make it non-destructive. Also, when we have the window open in the Filter Curve EQ, we have no way of knowing which plugin is loaded or which preset is loaded. Give us the ability to know that. Put that at the top of the screen or somewhere in the screen so that when we load a preset, we know what preset's loaded. Otherwise, you don't know. There's no indication. So give us that ability as well and make it a real-time plugin. I would also like to see the Audacity compressor plugin and the noise gate plugin brought over into the real-time category because right now, both of those are destructive. Let's make them non-destructive and let's make them available to us as non-destructive plugins. So that's pretty much it for my Audacity wish list for 2024. I'm hoping that at least some of these things get brought into Audacity during 2024. I teach Audacity. I've been teaching Audacity for several years now in different venues, and I have almost 5,000 students to date. So I have my pulse on what the needs are for students in learning Audacity. I know what they're up against. I know what their wish list is, and many of those things are reflected in my wish list as well. And I think outlining the things that I have here in my wish list for Audacity would really help Audacity move into the future as a powerful competitor in the digital audio workstation arena. And hey, if you're looking for some in-depth instruction in Audacity for spoken word content, here's some good news. My courses at the Audacity Bootcamp are now 30% off through January 1st, 2024. And you can get to those by going to audacitybootcamp.com. Audacity Bootcamp 
www.audacitymarketingbootcamp.com. And once you're there, you'll find two courses. The first one is called Audacity Step-by-Step Beginner to Advanced. And that's where I take the student from a very beginning basic level and understanding of Audacity into more advanced topics. And we cover a lot of material in that course. You can preview some of the videos by going to audacitybootcamp.com. The second class that I teach is called ACX Audiobook Production Using Audacity. And this course is designed primarily for ACX audiobook narrators and editors who use Audacity as their software of choice. Again, you can get to both of those courses by going to audacitybootcamp.com. And if you enter the coupon code HOLIDAY30, you'll get 30% off the already low cost of the course. Plus, I pick up your sales tax. So if you're in the market, go check it out, audacitybootcamp.com. I'll have that code below so that you can just cut and paste it in. It's also all over the website at audacitybootcamp.com. So I hope to see you there. And I think you're going to like what you hear, what you see, and what you learn in the Audacity Bootcamp. Until next time, you all take care.